The Indian aviation market is tiny compared to Malaysia, yet you're one billion people. Let's, not, let's put vested interests apart. There's a big enough pie for all of us. And let's try and make this dream of allowing every Indian to fly a reality by working together. So yeah. I've got no, no grudges whatsoever. Um, are you happy with uh, what AirAsia Air has achieved so far in its Indian operations? And by when do you think you will expand to bigger metros such as Mumbai and Delhi? I'm uh, overjoyed, honestly, because we had very little time to, to sell. The load factors are great. I walked around the airport. The staff are, are fantastic. The enthusiasm I got from passengers, they all knew who I was and taking pictures and saying, can we go here, when are we going here, when are we going here, you know, saying that I never, and one, one girl said I never flown on a plane, um, I've never been to Goa. That made it, right, that made the 14 months really worth it mm. for me. Um, so plans are accelerating, we're going to put six planes in now, uh, we'll have to see how quick we grow, but we have lots of planes. We have lots of ideas. Uh, let's see how the budget goes. Let's see how the 520 rule goes. Uh, let's see how airport incentives and ATFs. But if all those things go in the right way, not just us, but Indigo and Spice and Goa will all benefit. And the people of India will get more choice and, and better value. Right. Um, broadly, do you think the aviation sector is out of the woods? I mean, it's suffered for a long time in the last uh, few years. And you spoke about the budget. What else, what do you think the government can do to really help the aviation sector? I mean, I think um, taxes are too high. I don't think it's out of the woods yet, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, airport tax, UDF, all these things are, are, are way too high. And I say, understand, you put investment in. But you're not, you're not filling the airports. Uh, airlines are the only people who are going to fill the airports. So taxes have to go uh, down and replace with volume. Hmm. So if you tax someone 100, but you get 1 million, but if you tax 10 and you get 10 million, you, you get the same numbers, but you get more people buying duty-free and all these other things that go along. Uh, two, uh, the tourism market is under-exploited in India, under-exploited. It's the best job creator. So liberalize the 520 rule, allow a greater tourism market. And I run concurrent to what you say. I, I'm super excited about developing the Northeast. Mm -hmm. That's such a beautiful part of the world, but it's so hard to get to. Um, and Bombay and Delhi doesn't really excite me so much because there's a lot of people there. Right. I'm about developing new markets and giving people in those economies a chance to grow and have benefit. 50% of air Asia routes are routes that were never done before. Right. So, um, you know, I think anything that the government can do to facilitate the aviation business by reducing cost and replacing it with volume, ATF is well documented, uh, which, which, which really one of the best industries is domestic, domestic uh, travel. So uh, it's discriminatory against domestic tourism right now. Right. So, and uh, airport infrastructure, we're very positive about everything. The planes are going full. The pickup on the new route that we just launched about one and a half weeks, which was Cochin, has been great. You know, so we're very excited about it. I'm, I'm thrilled. Right. Uh, when can we expect you to start flying from metro such as Mumbai and Delhi? Because those are really the hubs. I actually believe that while they are the hubs, I believe the rest of India needs a lot of connectivity. I think Mumbai may take us some time to come there. It's, you know, it's the most difficult decision for me because the constant support we get from Mumbai, Delhi and, you know, the requests I get personally for us to come there, there's a huge opportunity. But it's also a market that's very saturated. Air traffic is, in, you know, it's congested. So it's probably one that we do at a later time. Right. And um, what's happening to your plans, you know, for moving the AirAsia hub from Chennai to Bangalore? Um, is that progressing as planned? Because the section raised, um, you know, protests for BIL giving exemptions to AirAsia coming here. So what's really happening on that? Well, look, actually we're setting up BIL Bangalore as another hub. Chennai is the hub and we're not, you know, taking away from that. We're still staying there. We still have a lot. I, I still have my house in still Chennai. I think we're looking to, you know, build up Bangalore. And I can't really comment much on the protests that we're getting from to BIL. I think that's something you need to ask them. We're not, we're not, you know, protest on something that we are, you know, um, uncomfortable with. The last 13 months we've taken protests out of every window that you could think about. So look, it's what it is. I think 
the deal was given for an aircraft that would move its hub here, put a main base here, and we've shown the indication to do that. And uh, hopefully we'll avail to those those deals. Again, we didn't move to Bangalore because a deal was given. We moved to Bangalore because we saw an opportunity to build a second hub there. And when a deal is given, it just made it sweeter. And uh, I think it's an interesting thing. It's I'm still very positive that we do great things from here. Right.